Right, what have we got to do? Right, it's time for Bush, another Cyan Sky or Cyan Ski or whatever the hell you're supposed to call them. If you remember, let me see if I've got it there. Here is the, this is the six, I think this is the HS. 6R, this is the HS5R, so different, different setup. I mean, this is your traditional all in one, um, you know, 18650, same cell, um, you know, solid metal, and it has your auxiliary LED and your red light modes and your main beam. Um, this one has a slightly larger. Um, TIR lens, but it works slightly differently, different emitters and things like that. But it's also USB rechargeable, just like this one. Um, interestingly, uh, and I've noticed on their website, they're saying that you can take this out of the cradle. I'll show you. I'm not so sure. I did have a pair of, there they are. I was fiddling around earlier with some needle nose pliers, trying to get these this out. I think I'd probably damage it, but I'll show you that, I'll show you that. So let's put that to one side, okay. So what we're looking at, this is the Science Guy HS5R headlamp. Um, so it looks like a 90 degree, um, but like I say, I had a bit of trouble taking it. I'll quickly show you the box, just rapidly. Don't worry, I'll be mercifully slow, uh, quick with this. So it's got your main beam, then you've got a secondary white and red, but I'll go over that. It's got a magnetic, it says magnetic suction tail cap. There is no suction. I think what they mean is it's a magnetic base. In other words, there's a magnet embedded in here. So if you put that next to a ferrous material, it will stick and I'll show you that. Also supports type C charging and it's quite rapid. So a nice all metal design. It's very rugged. I like the design. So you've got a 200 meters distance claim anyway, and then you've got your 1300 maximum lumens. That's on turbo setting, but there is a step down on that and it's heat activated. And then you have a 220 hours runtime. I think that's on the lowest mode, which is like the eco mode they call it. So I'll quickly show you that and that. I know this is the boring bit, two meter drop rate, IPX, blah, 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 blah. I'll go over that and you can pause that and have a look at that this is in 4k so there you go right enough of that let's get on with this so i've put this back in the box i've actually within the last 20 minutes i've just come home i've been out again for about an hour and a half hiking with this so i've put this back exactly as it arrived in the box so i have been out multiple times um, i've used this for about two weeks now i'll show you what i got i did use their cable earlier but i've been using my type c to c so I'll bush get rid of that there's your warranty card bush no problems with that that was on it. You get a little um, felt sticker here and it's 3M. So in other words, it's 3M so the adhesive actually works. So keep that if you need it. You've got a little pocket clip. Now, the fact that it has a pocket clip shows you that they are certain that this comes out of this cage. So you see this cage mechanism? The only problem is I've been trying to get it out and like I say, I don't know how you're supposed to do it. I don't know whether you're supposed to pull that down and not being able to do it or pull it down this way I've not really been able to do that, although I did notice there's a hole here. So I wonder if, I did try, I tried with just one part of the needle nose, if I can get that through there and push this down, see that? And then try and push it down. But even when you do that, it just bends, see? There must, I must be thick and there must be an easier way. Do you push these at the same time? I mean, that's nearly snapped my nails. Um, I'll probably do a follow-up video because I can't work out how you get that out of there. I have tried. I'm not an idiot. I've tried with screwdrivers and needle nose pliers and all sorts of things. I just think that in order to get that out, you're going to mar this up and knack it. But okay, that's what they're saying. So you do get that and you get a couple of extra O-rings. I'm not going to bore people with that. You just put that on the machine threaded section because you can strip them when you're opening it and closing it. Although with this one, you shouldn't be opening and closing it too often because it is a USB rechargeable and there's a USB thing. And I'll, I'll go over that though, don't worry. So that came with it to terminate the circuit. Put that to one side, Bush, get rid of that. There's their cable and I'll show you that in a moment. So we'll unpack that again. Ah, I did test it initially and it's a type A to type C. So type C, you can put it in that way or that way. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so boom, put that to one side. Here's the manual. I can't be bothered to read that. It's in Chinese that way. Chinese, uh, there you go, and in English, you do it that way. And I have a, a quick read, so this is in 4K, so let's just have a quick look at that. You can pause that if you really want to read that. There's your important stuff like the step down information. 
So pause it if you want, but I will go for that bush. I don't really read them sort of things. Right, so what we're looking at here. So this has a maximum output of 1300 lumens. So it's not like some of the O lights and the more powerful lights where they're up to the 2000 range. Although, to be fair, I mean, a lot of these lights that do 2000, 2500 lumens, they have a rapid step down. 30 seconds, it just boom, it plummets down to the sort of 900, 1000 range. Um, this does have a integrated system. So once the heat gets too much, it will step down from its turbo of 1300. Low. I was again I was hiking with this again tonight I had it on turbo I wasn't getting a lot of step down or not that I could notice so it must be a really smooth and, 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 and slow ramp so pretty good very impressed I kept you know I, I, I went like that so I have the button to my right and I kept touching this bit which is your heat sinks there you see at the back there I kept touching that and it was it never got daft hot which is a good sign I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit deeper heat sinks like something on these skill hunts see where they have the really thinned heat sink you see that there whereas this is less it's more sort of um just you know a tiny little sort of dent um, but it certainly works so it's not an issue and like i say um this is an all-in-one unit it's quite nice actually uh like i say uh, it goes you know it goes all the way down so you've got 90 degrees so that goes all the way down there so that's at the side imagine this this, this is where your head will be and it, it doesn't go quite all the way up though it only goes to there that's as high up as it goes but you're never going to be looking up there unless your eyeballs go you know, through, the, through the roof of your head so you, you want it looking either straight ahead when you're walking or running quickly or when you're doing hiking and things like that or working on machinery you'd have it down where your hands and feet are brilliant and it uses a tir so you're getting a nice bit of th sort of spread with this although it is quite throwy and i think the reason it's quite throwy is is the main emitter which is the one in the middle the main emitter which they have picked is the sft the luminous sft 40 not the sst 40 which is throwy in its own right sft is even more throwy and um, quite strange to pair that with a tir but it does give you a nice throw you lose a tiny bit of the peripheral which isn't always a good thing on a headlamp, but it's within tolerable levels. So again, like I, like I say, I've literally just been out hiking about 20 minutes, 25 minutes ago and loved it. Um, had no problems with this. Um, the pro actually, the more I use this, the more I like it. It's one of those lights, um, like some of the Wubins and some of the Soferns. The more you use it, the more you think, I really like this. And you, you gravitate towards them, you, you go and pick them up. I mean, I've personally been picking this up to test it, but... Um, it's nice it's nice and, and compact and I feel confident because it's not falling to bits and you know and this is very this stays put you know, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that and on top of that this is nice and soft so when that's against your head no issues this is all smoothed off so there you go so that's all smoothed off as you can see that's a smooth surface so no problems with that on the forehead brilliant um, I was sweating a little bit even though it's about uh, seven degrees Celsius tonight um, but I was, I was moving quite rapidly during the end and going up and down hills uh, in the dark and this this picked up the sweat no problem and it didn't didn't move about um, and this stayed put I didn't have to keep adjusting it I hate ones where you've got to keep adjusting it this seems quite reasonable and you can quickly take that out so no problems with this nice and thick much better I mean look at the thickness and I'm not slagging off skill hunt here but look at the thickness of the band so if you look if we put these side to side and I'll line them up I know this is black so it's hard to see but you see how it's bigger so you're getting that extra section just more secure because at first I thought now hang on this isn't a three pointer so here's a three pointer where this goes around the circumference of the head and then you have this over the top uh, this is just a two pointer so I probably wouldn't use this for running but you can tighten this up and because this is extra wide it is still actually comfortable it's not like having you know something horrific like a cable against your head and it feels like you're being garroted or you've got a you know, crown of thorns on or something so in regards to the specs pretty decent um, this is an IPX8, in other words, you can submerge this in water and it will be fine. So excellent, I love that. I understand some people say, you don't need IPX8. Completely agree, depends what you're doing. But if I'm wild camping and it pees down, I have to, or I've fallen some water, I need to rely on the fact that this will still work. It doesn't matter what I throw at it. Even if I throw buckets of water at it, it will still work. If I leave it out, you know, so I've been camping and left equipment out and you, in the morning it's full of dew and all sorts of stuff. It makes it, it, it puts my mind at ease put it that way so ipx8 excellent well done science guy has a two meter drop rating now that's half a meter drop rating higher than most of the others most of the lights is like one meter to 1.5 that seems to be the standard at the moment two meters that fills me with a bit of confidence so again well done science guy 
like I say, it uses the SFT40 as the main, and you can't really see this, but to the left and the right, you have two Everlight 2835s, I think, off the top of my head. Everlight 2835s, yes. What they do is they provide a, an auxiliary light and a red light, but I'll, I'll go over that when I show you the UI. And it uses an 650, and it even comes with a cell. Now, the cell that they send you, I'll show you. Now, this is their wrap. Um, I don't know who makes this cell. Just bear in mind, it is a button top. But don't worry, I have tested it with a Samsung 30Q, in other words, a flat top, and it still worked. And I did the jiggle test, because sometimes you can put in a flat top and go, yeah, that works. Now, hang on, jiggle it. And because it's not tight enough, it, it'll turn itself off. However, as you can see, there is a spring at the top and the bottom, so it doesn't matter. It, it takes up the slack, so no problems with that. The only slight issue I have here is this is only a 2000, uh, sorry, a 2600 milliamp hour 18650. I would have liked to have seen, you know, 3000, something like that, like a 30Q. So that's a little bit of a drop. Although I did one in one review where I mentioned this on one of the lights and someone said, how dare you knock it down for that? But do you not want more capacity? So the people who are complaining saying I shouldn't mention the fact that they're not giving you bigger capacity batteries. I'm, go I'm going to come round to your house, take three drinks out of your cup of coffee, and then say, there you go, is that okay? Because now you're getting less. And according to you, that's not an issue. So I think that is an issue. So I'm just mentioning these things. Bigger capacity means longer run time. Longer run time means it's safer, it's more reliable, you can go more days when well camping, it's better. So just something to bear in mind. But you do get this in with the price. So fair enough. Pop that back in. And the threads are all right. I'll give you a quick look there. I mean, this is black on black. It's very difficult to see there, but there is a, an O-ring there and they've put a, a tiny bit of uh, lube on there, which is good, fair enough. And it goes in nicely. It's got nice, thick, sort of rhomboid type threads. Brilliant. Workmanship is nice. The flap for the USB is okay. So look, it's type C. I've not had any issues with that. It just pushes in with a thumb and that's it. So I've had no issues with that. It's been perfectly acceptable. Okay, so in that regard, I'll show you the charging. So we'll use their cable. So they send you a Type A to a Type C. So it's Type C. So let's get my handy charger here. So plug that in, and then plug this in, and then you get red, and it is charging. So if you ignore that figure, so five volts, zero point six of an amp, so six hundred milliamps. So that's its charging rate. It does go higher than that. It's pretty rapid and it's pretty impressive. And it does run whilst charging, watch. So if you hold, it will run whilst charging. The only problem is you can't change the mode. So that I'll knock a tiny mark off that, but I will say at least they've allowed you to do that. At least they've allowed you to do that. And it is type C to type C, and I'll show you that. So turn it off. So like I say, I like ones that you can use whilst charging because I sometimes have to do that when I'm wild camping. Now that is an important feature. However, bear with me a few seconds. It is. I've got a type C to type C, so I'll plug that in. So in other words, a power delivery, there has to be some level of negotiation between this and the charge giver. So have they gone the extra mile and put in the extra work to allow this? Let's check, this should go red, and it does. It's charging, and as you can see, five volts and 0 0.5 of an amp there, charging. No problem, it's dropping a bit there because um, I did top this up in the car on the way back. I didn't want to completely blank so pretty good and again works whilst charging but only in one mode but never mind it's not the end of the world at least you've got some light and it gives you the option to wear this whilst hiking hook it up to a power bank and you get massive run times brilliant thank you well done science guy i appreciate that as a feature and in regards to the base you know i did mention it's got a mag base there just to show you that let's take something ferris this just, just happens to be a saber cut mini ratchet so let's attach it yes look see that it's lifting up the whole ratchet no problem so anything ferrous and it will attach itself. A bit strange um, because I thought, well, hang on, but if it's stuck in this, do you really want to be sticking on stuff and tail standing, which you can do? Uh, but according to them, you can't take this out of here. I must just be too thick and I can't, I can't get it out or I'm not strong enough. I'm going to have to go back to the gym again. I can't get that out, but I will keep trying. I'll probably do a follow-up video. So mag base does work. So all in all, pretty decent. Button-wise is nice, I've had no problems with it. It's okay, it's slightly recessed if you look at this from the side, it's slightly recessed, which is good, but don't worry, it does have a lock. So if you're traveling and you have this in your pocket or your bag, you can either use this function, which you just disengage the circuit there, and it will no longer work. Disengage and it will go back. Or if you want to go by the UI, you just double click, so 
see the little flash right that's locked now so if you press the button all you'll just get is a flash it is locked so pretty decent so now it's unlocked and in regards to the button it does have it tells you the battery you know when you turn this on green means it's fully charged you have a flashing green then it goes to red and so on um, so at least it's giving you an indication of the battery you don't have to go in the ui and count five million flashes and go right that's sixteenth of a minute of a millimeter left of a voltage and i don't mind that but mainstream market don't really want that they just want something easy so green's green's good green's flashing's not so good red's danger you know they, they want that and that's fine and that works okay so let's quickly go over the ui so in regards to the ui it's pretty simple like i say two doesn't take it to turbo two is lock so we'll, we'll show you how this works okay so long press on and it's memory mode so that was the last mode i had it in when i was hiking and long press off and when it is on so long press again so half a second for on you just cycle through them with a press so you've got low medium high turbo so low is 30 lumens and you get 18 hours runtime. this is their figures here um, pretty decent and it looks okay like i say quite through you see how you've got this prominent spike in the middle there i'm trying to get get that to pick out you can see it on the t there especially see even though this is a tir so you're getting this lovely flood here which is brilliant you're still getting this this hot hot spot in the middle so you do get a bit of push and especially on long trails i've noticed that this does really push out especially on the turbo but then you still get this nice fill so it's kind of a hybrid -y, um, quite interesting so you have this like bleb in the middle see that right in the middle there that gives you a bit of push and then the rest kind of spreads it and it does work so like i say there's your modes so we've got low 30 lumens 18 hours medium 150 you can hike by that i had no problems with that that gives you 12 hours that's pretty impressive high that's the one i used predominantly for for hiking tonight 450 2.5 hours maximum run time and then you've got turbo now they're saying two hours so if we've got turbo that's 1300 so pretty decent isn't it and pretty wide you see here that's what i like in a in a headlamp if i'm hiking you need that look at that brilliant it's certainly not 180 but it's wide enough well done science guy you've thought about this so good job um just bear in mind they're quoting two hours but there is a step on this after about a minute or so it depends on the on the ambient temperature though i mean i've been out in two degrees recently and it, in fact it was minus two when i was at one of the hills um very cold so it's going to step down at a completely different rate to someone who lives in you know arizona and it's you know 25 degrees completely different so but but look I'm holding that. That's not that hot. It's warming up now and it's getting hot. But look, you wouldn't do that with a light with one of these toasty. I'm squeezing that as hard as I can. Look, look. I'm not. I'm not bull bull crapping you here. So it doesn't get. It's. It did okay outside. No problems with that. You also have a secondary mode. So if you click and hold for a minute and a sorry, I was going to say a minute and a half. A second and a half. So boom. Right now you're in secondary modes. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to tell that. But you are so this is your white eco mode this is only three lumens but it spreads it out quite nicely and 220 hours of runtime so that's pretty impressive so you could use that as a nightlight quite white there um i did test this in fact here's some little facts and figures here did test this it's got a bit of pulse width modulation but it it's so close together the sawtooth isn't worrying me it's not in what i would call the risk category i didn't notice it flickering away or being irritating um, but it's quite a modulation there isn't it um, i presume that's to save power because it's constant circuit for the main beam so pretty decent um long run time there it's not high cri though so just be aware of that it's it's in the sort of 65 um sort of cri mode 60 65 percent ish to 70 percent ish it's okay it's okay i would have liked to have seen a high cri mode though just for working up close and, and getting a nice color rendering okay so if you want to go to the next mode it's just one press so remember we're in the secondary modes here so that was your eco then you have red so there's red well red flash anyway so that's pretty good and like i say this is using the everlight 2835 here um, so it's pretty bright um i tried walking with this yeah it's okay it, it wasn't so easy on pure mud pure mud tends to absorb light unless it's really picking up the water so it kind of absorbed all this away so i'll probably use this more and i'll go to the next mode which is just pure red um i would use this for map reading and put you know 
tighten up the camp and try to save a bit of energy. But in that regard, it's 10 lumens they're quoting and you get 25 hours out of this. Pretty decent, nice. But like I say, I would have liked to have seen a high CRI um, auxiliary. And then it goes back again. Okay, so click and hold. Boom, we're back and main again in memory, say some remembering, and then boom, you can go through them all again. So pretty simple. And then you've got the two, which is your lock. Straightforward. At first I thought, oh, I don't know if I like this. The more I used it, the more I enjoyed it. The UI is simple and quick and you can quickly get to what you want. I like it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go over some good points and bad points. Um, but first, in fact, put this down here. Right, let's bring up a photograph. Okay, so what I did was I went out with a load of other lights. I think it was nine in total, including this one. And I, I shot them. And I, and I did like it, I think it was a one and a half second exposure on them all, pointing at exactly the same target with my hand at the same tight and at the same height and every light pointing at the same target. Um, although um, you might notice this tiny difference on the Science Sky 6R, uh, sorry, 5R, where I fell over in the mud a little bit and I had to adjust the tripod, but apologies for that. I did genuinely fall over. Okay, so what can we see here? So first off, I mean, even before I tell you this, I'll just tell you that the CRI for this light was 66.9. Uh, in the words, the color rendering index was a tiny little bit low. It wasn't worryingly low. You know, 70 is about where you want to be, and it wasn't high CRI in the 90s. So you're gonna, you're not gonna get full color rendering index. It's just one of those emitters. That's what, that, you know, that's what you're getting. And the tint was 5,735. 5, so kind of whitish. You know, towards the white end, but not too white. It's not like 6,500 super white. You know, cool white or whatever they call it. It was down there with towards the neutrals it was nice i didn't i didn't use it and go oh i don't like this because and i'm a bit of a tint snob so just just be aware of that okay so let's have a look omitec was a pro more lumens um you know it'll go up to i think it's eight one thousand eight hundred and fifty i think um very warm tint top left there um doing pretty good it's illuminating the trees it's illuminating the ground and also to the far left, you can see that tree is being illuminated nicely. So no problems with that. And that is a large TRI, TIR lens on that one. So no problems, but very expensive. Um, then we have the light that we're looking at, which is the HS5R. Um, as you can see, that does look a lot whiter. It's not, it's more neutrally. Um, but in comparison to the very warm uh, you know, Wizard Pro, it just looks that way. Um, pretty good and you can see you know that there's that hot spot that i mentioned right in the middle that really does give you with a push i would say that's doing a better job at illuminating the bridge in the very very distance um, in regards to peripheral it's okay the ground's okay um and the peripheral's okay the wizard pro's probably slightly better but to be fair to science sky that's it's pumping more lumens so you're not going to get the same runtime are you okay so moving on to the science sky hs6 or which is the all-in-one that was just using the main beam. You can use the main beam and the auxiliaries at the same time. I didn't do that and try and cheat or anything. So in that regards, quite strange, isn't it? Um, it looks, uh, it definitely looks uh, warmer in regards to tint. And um, the hotspot isn't quite as wide, but that's because the lens is slightly smaller. And peripheral is okay. It's pretty good. Um, I would say the peripheral is slightly better than the science guy, especially to the right hand side. You can see those trees at the side. They're standing out a lot better. And the throw is slightly better and more powerful on the HS5 or in my opinion. Okay, I compared it with the Luminite. Um, main hotspot of that is much wider. Um, it's a more traditional TIR on that. Much more expensive light though. And peripheral, slightly better to the left maybe. But foreground, poor. Um, not, as, not as floody is it? So I would say that doesn't do as good. Even though I do like that light, I still think the Science Sky HS5 or is doing better in that regard. If you compare the far right of the Luminite Compass R and the far right of the HS5R there, if we zoom in, look, the Compass R is lacking. Science Sky is doing a much better job, and that's what you need when, you, when you're hiking. You need a bit of peripheral. It helps you with putting your foot down safely and seeing what the hell's around you and balance and things like that, and it's, it's a more ple pleasurable experience instead of this reduced field of vision. Okay, so we'll zoom back out of that. And then you have the Olight H2 or Nova, pretty old now, but it's getting on a bit now, but I am trying to get one of the Perrin 2s um, to replace it. 
that's starting to fall by the wayside now. It's sort of like a not so bright version of the Army Tech Wizard Pro. A um, little bit lacking on the foreground there, like the Luminite, and a little bit lacking on throw, possibly a little bit. It's just starting to fall behind, even though it's supposed to be, you know, 2,000-ish lumens. That's their claim anyway. Very warm tint on that. Then you have the Skill Hunt, and again, that's showing its age. It's got an older emitter, smaller head, foreground you it's not getting the peripheral to the left and the right so it's it's fallen behind which is a shame um, and then the fireflies bottom left i just threw that in for a laugh that's massive lumens you know it's it's ludicrous amounts of lumens and it steps down very rapidly it's a more it's you know it's using a larger cell uh, and it's a much bigger unit but heat is an issue and it drops down rapidly that is one of the problems with that one so nice uniform beam on that one isn't there there's not a lot to dislike about that but it's a lot more lumens and heavier so let's look at the lumen top hl3a small light 18650 again but it's a if i remember rightly it is a triple emitter tir so a more interesting setup but even though it's a triple emitter and it tries to get a little bit of spread um i would say peripheral to the right and the left not as good definitely not as good as the science guy um in all, all in all, I think the Science Guy is doing really good. So from SP40, a favourite of mine, very, very budget-orientated light. I think that does an exceptional job for its price. So if we compare the SP40 and the Science Guy, you've got to ask yourself, right, why, 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 why would you pay more? What's the point in paying more for the Science Guy? Because the SP40 does an excellent job, and it does do an excellent job there. But I would say the hotspot in the middle is brighter, so you're going to get more push. That's because it's using a better emitter, in my opinion. Um, but obviously you're paying more money and foreground a tiny bit better you know tiny bit better although you could argue um, it's slightly brighter possibly on the peripheral ever so slightly so if you want more push probably go for the science sky and pay the extra it's a lot more rugged you know the paint isn't falling off the science sky whereas in the sp40 the paint is falling off i accept that it's a budget light okay so let's get rid of these images okay right that's gone right so back to what I'm supposed to be talking about. So let's have a look at some good points and bad points, and then I'll quickly show you some of the lights. Okay, so, you know, really, I think they've done a good job. They've concentrated on the important things. So in regards good, flat tops work, so you don't have to just use their cell or a, or a button top. Great, you get that cell within the price. Uh, it works whilst charging. That is a brilliant feature. It, it, it increases runtime to unlimited, it, it, you know, how many... You know how many power packs do you have you can keep running it off that you can also do that whilst you're working at camp when you're well camping that's very important i would have liked to have seen it be able to use all the different modes i don't know why you're stuck in one mode although some other lights do have that issue um, but at least you can use it whilst charging uh, mag base if you can get it out of this damn thing you, can, you know you can hang this on things you know bonnet to cars and things like that handy nice little extra feature for you there red light and auxiliary mode brilliant um, although I would have liked to have seen a higher CRI in that, but okay, not the end of the world. It's Type C with power delivery, so you can go C to C, no problems. Brilliant. It's got E lock if you want it. I mean, you can use the traditional, you know, disengage the circuit, but it still works. Um, and it has a battery level on the button. There's a lot to like this, and I like this. I like the, the way this is extra thick. It's very comfortable and very soft on the inside. I like that. This is nice and smooth. Whole thing comfortable, easy to use, nice tactile button. That makes sense. It just works. Uh, in regards to bad though, they're only giving you a 2600 cell. I would have liked to have seen, you know, something like a 30Q level uh, by Samsung, the you know, 3000 milliamp hours. Not the end of the world though. You can put your own cell in and I'm sure people who buy this have already got their own cells. Um, I can't seem to get this off the headband, but I will keep trying. Maybe I need to get, you know, get the Nipex out and maybe I'm doing this wrong. I mean, that sort of goes down, but then I can't get it out. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Put in the comments section, just trail trek, you know, go to the gym and work out and, and try and get this out properly. Um, but that's not a, a massive issue, you know. It's it's a head, it, it's, a, it's, a light, it's a light torch to go on your head. I like that. Um, the, the auxiliary mode is nice to see, especially the white light, but the only problem I have with that is I wish it was high CRI, but I've mentioned that. Um, the CRI on the main beam is like 66.9. Okay, it's getting down there, but it's not too, you know, fatally low where it's irritating. There wasn't any silly greenness or anything. Uh, the main beam was nice. It was mid-range and it wasn't too cool. It wasn't too warm. Um, it's only a two-pointer headband, but it is thick to make up for that. I would have liked to have seen maybe the three-pointer, but this is simple. And because it's quite compact and not too heavy, it works. 
I never used this and thought, oh no, it's moving. Oh no, I'm having to adjust it. Didn't happen. So the quality wise, they've they've got they've got that you know well done. So I've got no problems with that. Okay, so what we'll do is here is the light. I'll show you some of the lights I compared it with. And I'll, I'll do this rapidly though. Um, SP40, like I say, paint's fallen off, but much cheaper, but all slightly comparable. Although the throw is much better on this. Um, this comes out, but it's got a much cheaper, more wobbly headband, but it's a three-pointer, and I like that light, uh, but very cheap. So that's the Sofern SP40. That uses, interestingly, an orange peel reflector. It does a brilliant job, doesn't it? Um, you have the Luminite Compass R. I still think their attachment system is one of the best. Watch. Pull it out. It's out. That's it. And it's fully metal. Now, when you want to put it back in, you just press it. Boom. That's it. Never never comes out. Works a treat. It's a three-pointer. Brilliant. Um, and it's a TIR, so very expensive though, which is a shame because it's got a lovely micro lensed TIR there, um, and workmanship on this exceptional, very very good, but very expensive. So um, I also tested it against the six, so the Science Sky HS six R. Um, interesting. You have your main beam. I'll show you. You've got your main beam there with all of its modes, and then you have your secondary modes here. So you have your high. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a higher CRI auxiliary, and then you have different modes on that. And then you have your red mode, red flashing, and so on. So pretty good, and you can actually put the main and the auxiliary on at the same time. That's quite a nice feature. Um, uses a very similar system of attachment here. Look, very similar. It's got that lovely soft band, but done a good job on that. So there's another of your options. I tested it against the H2R Nova. Like I say, this is getting old now. Um, the Perrin and then the Perrin 2 came out to replace this. Um, they have proximity sensors and daft stuff like that. But again, this was nice in its time. Very warm tint, micro lensed, um, turbo quite high, something like 2000. So look at that, that's, that's wiping out the whole camera there. So boom, very, very bright. Um, no problems with O-Light. I know people sometimes slag them off. They're mainstream, I don't have a problem with that. You know, the, 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 the companies are there to make money. Um, and, and that's just the way they go. The, the, you tend to get less choice of emitters, but that's just that's just the way it goes. It's not the end of the world. Wizard Pro, this is now replaced by the Elf or whatever. I don't know why that's called Elf. It's don't know what it's got to do with Christmas. Micro lens again, 10 meter drop rating, somewhere like 10 meters water rating, brilliant. Um, I've dropped this and smashed it, but very expensive, very expensive. So that's a, that's a slight problem. And I, and I tested it against. Here's the PL47. This is the Gen 2 where they made a few little changes. Never really liked the attachment on this, it's a bit poor and you had to, had to pay extra to get this. It's a three-pointer though. Um, I like the auxiliaries, I think that's quite cool, the ice white auxiliaries which run. And then it's got a good UI. So a double click turbo, boom, extremely bright, but you know, it uses a, a much bigger cell, it uses a 21700 instead of an 18650 like all the rest. So much more powerful, but it gets hot rapidly. And it's a little bit more cumbersome and, and more prone to jiggle. Um, and lastly, I tested it against the HL3A by Lumentop here. A little bit underrated, triple emitter, but as we saw from the side by sides, it's even though it's a triple emitter, it's not that f it's not as floody as you might think. But a lovely tint on this, very very nice tint, nice and compact. And this is good. I I, I praised them, I think, in the review. This is actually pretty decent and comfortable. Um, it's got those sweat things on. I've never really, you know, if I sweat, I sweat. I, I, to me, that's more about grip. Um, and, it, and it seems to work. It keeps it attached to your head, but you can just tighten things to get the same effect. So you've got all of them. So, boosh, get rid of them. Right, let's talk about this. Marks out of 10. So, flat tops work. You get a cell with it. Works whilst charging, albeit in one mode only, which is a shame. Mag base, it supposedly comes out of this. If you're stronger than me, you can get it out. If you're like, you know, Bruce Banner or something. Um, red light mode and auxiliary mode, brilliant. You know, that's, that's added features, I like that. It's Type-C to Type-C, power delivery, excellent. Um, E-lock if you want it, and battery level on the button. Excellent, and I like this band. The band works, nice. Rugged construction, the paint hasn't come off. I've had, had this in, in and out of different pockets. I've used it for a couple of weeks. Bad points, um, CRI could be a bit higher, especially on that auxiliary. I would love to have seen a higher CRI on there. You only get the 2600 cell. Um, I can't seem to get off the headband, but that could be my feeling. I'm not complaining about Science Sky there. Um, and it's only a two-point band, so if you're going to run, maybe it's not a good idea. But interestingly, they have a little hole here suggesting that you could attach one somehow. So that's strange, isn't it? I wonder if originally they were going to do that and then they just went for a thicker main band. 
interesting. Okay, so it marks out a 10. I'm gonna give this a healthy 8.5. Why? It's got everything that needs to be right, right. That's the thing, and it's rock solid, rock solid. I've, I've enjoyed, I can honestly say I've enjoyed using this. I really have, you know, I can't say any more than that. Um, so I'm gonna get an 8.5, I think they've done a really good job. Like I say, uh, high CRI on that auxiliary would, would really help. Um, I mean, what else? Three point a headband, but just offer that as an option. Not everybody needs that. Not everyone's running around like an idiot like me, so you don't need that. And because it's thick, you can tighten that up. This didn't untighten itself. It's been a joy to use. Um, I can't really, there's nothing much I can complain about. Price, I would like to see the price come down, but I guess you pay for something a bit more rugged and bear in mind it's got that two meter drop rate and suggesting it's a much better build. Okay, so 8.5, well done Science Guy. Um, right, let's get outside and I'll show you loads of comparisons and side by sides. So let's get out, Wee.